All right, so welcome back to part two of this series here. This is going to be the ladder build. And uh, you can see that I'm using some one by three rectangular tubing. This is 063 thickness. In order for me to get the angle, I'd just taken this one by three piece of wood over to the job site, uh, kind of got the angles I needed and made a template out of this. Once I got it marked up, it's time to get things cut up a little bit. Got it fastened down to the weld table right there. And I've got my... Uh, a seven and a quarter cutoff saw with a steel thunder blade on it and you can see it does no problems going through cutting things up especially this uh you know these are angles that are just hard to cut and uh this this is where it uh, it just worked out really good for stuff like this okay so this is this is why it's important to hang on to your extra metal droppings right here you know i just cut the angles off of those pieces of uh, one by three rectangular tubing and I'm going to fill them in. I'm going to have some tabs on either end that's going to mount it to the surface. Uh, and also that big long angle piece, I want to close that off. I need some one inch flat bar stock. Eighth inch would be perfect, one by eight. So I come over here to my metal uh, little short area where I stock all my stuff. And I did find a piece of one inch flat bar stock right here. And this is just long enough to take care of uh, that long angle piece, which is good. We're going to use this. But I couldn't find any any more pieces that this long. But but look at this. Here's here's some pieces that that were left over from a cut that I did. Uh, now these are these are about an inch and a sixteenth wide. You can see that I ripped them off of something and I hung on to them. And they're the perfect length that I need uh, to make the tabs for the either end of that thing. So how about that? This is why you hang on to everything. You never know when you're going to use some of it. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to comment about these empty beer cans sitting up here. Uh, just left over from the weekend. I had a few people over. We need to get these things crushed. Let's do that right now. Ah, uh, the can crusher. I get a lot of people asking me about how this thing works. Here's a quick little shot of what happens here. Put the can in, smash it down, goes into a bucket. Easy for recycling. All right, got that out of the way. Let's get back to work. So this is what I was talking about right here. Um, here's three pieces right here, and what I'm going to be using these for is capping the ends of this tubing off. Um, I'm going to Steve. I'm going to leave it about an inch and a half long here. I'll determine that length, uh, round these edges, drill a hole through, and then we'll weld these things on the bottom. Uh, two on the bottom and one on the top side, and then this is that piece of one-inch flat bar stock that's going to be long enough to handle that long angle that I got cut on the other side. So. Let's get these things measured up, drilled out, and get them welded on. All right, so I just grabbed a washer out of my uh, my bin over there, and I'm just getting a little radius put on here. Nothing really critical. I just wanted to round the edges uh, so nobody gets uh, hurt on that. And then a little center punch about a half inch down and a half inch over, and it's time to get these things drilled out. Okay, so I'm over here at the drill press, and I'm getting ready to drill out my parts right here. i got my 516s uh, drill bit in here. And I'm noticing that the, that the quill is dragging a little bit uh, coming down. And I just happened to look up in the adjustment here. Uh, there's, a little, there's a little bracket right here um, that, that guides the adjustment screw. And it looks like it's bent down. And I never really, you know, I've had this drill press for a couple months. I never really noticed that. But uh, I'm noticing, and I, I'm pretty sure that came in shipping that I had no way of doing this. So... Let me bring in and take a closer look at that and we'll get this thing fixed. Okay, it's right here. That's this little metal piece right here on an angle. It's hanging up on this. I'm pretty sure this thing here is supposed to be up at the zero mark there. Or close to it anyways. This is an easy fix. Let's get this thing fixed so we can keep going. Okay, so I just got a round barrel punch right here. You know, uh... I got these these Dasco Pro. I got a whole bunch of them in a kit at uh, the Home Depot, and I gotta say they've been pretty handy. I'll put a link in the description if anybody's interested in checking these things out. Uh, I think it was worth it. Uh, they were pretty inexpensive. They're good quality, and I got a whole bunch of them, different sizes. I think all I really need to do is just tap this thing up. Let me get this table out of the way. There. That fixed it. All right, so we got that out of the way, and I'm just uh, drilling these things out. Again, I think I may have mentioned it's a 516 drill bit, and uh, it was no problem going through there. And I just want to put a little chamfer on both sides of it so there's no burr there, and uh, took care of that. 
Took it over the Burr King to round off the edges. This has been a really good addition to the shop here, this Burr King. You know, you just, just when you think you don't really need something like this, this gets used almost daily in the shop. You can see it just really removes metal, especially for something like this. All right, so I just want to get these things welded on the bottom here of the rails. Uh, and again, this is what I'm going to be using to mount to the concrete floor. Uh, I'll be using a couple of Hilti screw anchors for this. I, I found that those screw anchors uh, are, are amazing. They're really simple to use, and they hold really strong. Um, really good product. Well, you can see I'm just welding these things on and around, and of course you don't see the fume extractor in there. Again, I got a new product in the shop, and uh, I just uh, get carried away here and uh, didn't think about using it. It's literally sitting 10 feet away, but uh, nevertheless, we'll get that thing put to use here uh, shortly later on in this video. You know, I was worried about warpage right here, you know, when you're putting a lot of heat and a lot of continuous welds down in this narrow part. But uh, it, it did deflect a little bit, but not too much at all. So it was not really an issue. Um, but I definitely was thinking about it. All right, so that's all done. And I just want to get and grind some of these welds down, clean things up uh, while I can. Yeah, you know, just using some Mercer flap disc right here. This is in a ceramic. I believe I'm starting with a uh, 27 grit on this one right here. And then I'll clean it up a little bit later with uh, um, a more lighter um, grit. You know, the 27 grit is pretty aggressive. Um, 27 or 36, those things are really aggressive. And, uh, you know, it doesn't take much to move a bunch of metal. In this situation right here, it didn't take any time at all to get that thing cleaned up uh, in, a, in a position where it looks like it's just one piece of metal. It's pretty awesome. All right, with that out of the way, it's time for the rungs. And, uh, you know, I think I needed seven pieces. And it's important these things are, are really, really accurate uh, so they can just drop right in. You can see I'm using those little barrel um pins if you will i had made those myself i know they're available there's been a, pe a couple people have given me some links to that but uh yeah I, I just made it myself and you can see it works really good just push them up against there and and uh, hold everything in place it keeps everything nice and square and these things are set on about i don't know a 10 degree angle you know i wanted them to run parallel to the floor uh, this uh, ladder is a little bit of on a rake and so it uh i just wanted them uh, to be comfortable as you're stepping up on the ladder to, uh, to be parallel to the floor. So that's about a 10 degree angle and they are spaced about 12 inches apart here. Just getting everything tacked into place. You know, I pre, I pre measured and, and got the right angle. I did this three or four times before I, before I got the right distance and the right spacing. But, uh, once I got it done, uh, then I just put some marks on the inside right there. And I did that off of camera just so I could line these things up and, and get them tacked into place. And there's that fume extractor. I finally remember I had it <laughs> and uh, I put it to use right here. You know, there's a, you can see there's a lot of welding going on. There's, uh, you know, three inches, four inches, probably five inches of welding on each one of these things all the way around. And, and if you might have, uh, if you remember when I was welding that one inch flat bar stock on there, there was a lot of fumes uh, everywhere. And here with this, you see that uh, a lot of welding right here and it just sucks that stuff right up, right out of the way. Uh, really good addition to the shop like that really long tube that's adjustable with that magnet on there it just allows me to drag that thing anywhere i want on the table you know something i don't really probably need to do is weld these things all the way around it's probably not necessary but i want to you know it just makes for a good clean job uh everything all the way around i don't want to have any any places where a chance of uh you know corrosion or rush could 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 if it got water or something on it you know it just wouldn't be a good thing so i like to close up all the gaps every time on on everything i do it's just a matter of a little bit more welding but you know what that's what makes it fun just finishing things up right here you know welding this thing all the way around both sides quite a bit of welding okay one of the last things is getting this little handrail on here now this thing here is something I had uh, bent in my metal supply store. I don't have a, 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 a bit tube bender here, but uh, I cut them to the length that I needed, which is about eight inches right here. 
and that's what I decided I was going to use for the for the length. I thought that was a, a comfortable size anyway. You got that cut off with the uh, Mercer cut off wheel right there. Works really good. And then just got it laid up on top of the ladder with a couple of mag squares. Okay, so I've got something that, that, that bugged me here a little bit. You know, my metal supply store, they do a great job fabricating everything. By the way, that's where I have this thing. I don't have a roller or bender, a uh, two bender, so I have this made up. But every time I have a part made up down there, they put the sticker on here. And uh, I know they're not thinking of the fabricator, but somebody ultimately needs to take this thing off. Uh, they can't have it finished. And, and you can see that the, the whole thing just seems to be like sticky. And, you know, you can't just pull it off at one, at one time. It's all stuck on there. So before I go any farther, let me get this thing off of here and uh, we'll continue on. Yeah, sometimes those things can be a little bit of a nuisance, but uh, hey, nevertheless, it uh, didn't take too much to get it off. It's not on every part. Sometimes they wrap them in plastic, and then they stick those stickers on the outside. But uh, anyways, we get this thing off here, you get moving along. All right, you see these mag squares? I've talked about them before. You know, I love these things. They work perfect in situations just like this, and uh, I end up getting them. Uh, four or five or six of these things. I got a bunch. Anyways, we're just finished welding this thing up. And then I've got a couple of cross braces in here that I want to get in here. So I've uh, just notched uh, the tubing right here with my uh, tube notcher. That's one thing I do have is a tube notcher. And you can see it makes for a perfect fit up there inside that tube. And uh, just welding things around there. Just kind of finishing up this this uh, this project right here. This was like the last finishing touches. I got everything done, and now it's time to just go cleaning up everything. And I mentioned I started with the uh, Mercer uh, ceramic flap discs. I started using uh, a 36 grit and then worked up to a 60 grit. And then on some of these here, I even swatched, uh, swapped over to a 120 grit. It just makes it for a really smooth finish, uh, you know, working up to the grits like that. And pretty nice little product right there but uh turned out really good you know getting all that grinding down making everything nice and flush And there it is. This is the finished product right there just before some paint. So I was just getting ready to put some paint on that and get it finished up. And there's one more last thing I want to do. I got these, these little uh, sticky tread things here. I thought it would be a great idea. Uh, ordered them on Amazon and uh, come in a roll, two inches wide. I don't know how long it was, 20 feet or something like that. So I got these things. I thought it would be great to be able to stick them on the treads right there. You can see I just got it got painted and then just uh, stick it on there so there's no slippage uh, if you're going up the ladder. It's a good little addition here. That was, that was kind of cool. It was a last-minute uh, thing that I did right here. But uh, I think that's going to be a, a, a good little addition. And there it is. It's all complete. Uh, turned out pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with the way this uh, whole thing turned out. Got it loaded on my truck and ready to get this thing installed. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video like I enjoyed making it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, don't forget to check out the website at jimbosgarage.com. Follow us on Facebook. Check us out on Instagram. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.